Did you know that you can actually engrave Christmas cards to then mail? This year I'm going to be showing you guys how to create engraved Christmas cards that you can go ahead and, and pop them in an envelope and send them off. They're going to have a picture of you and your family or you and your dog. And so I'm going to show you some basic print and cut and we're going to be using printable vinyl. And the, all the designs are free over at wellcraftedstudio.com. So I think that this is a quick project that is going to have a big wow factor. I think you're going to like it a lot. Step one, get the designs and upload them into Cricut Design Space. So to get to the free designs for these uh, Christmas cards, engraved Christmas cards, what you're going to want to do is go to the free library at the top of my blog, which is wellcraftedstudio.com. Or if you go to the blog post, you'll get the link there too. But um, you can see that once you sign in, it's is password protected, but it's free. You can get the password if you're a subscriber. And you guys can subscribe and then unsubscribe. That's totally fine. I get that. So down here in Dur, so yeah, there's a bunch of stuff here, like I think hundreds of free files now. Um, if you go all the way down towards the bottom to this, which says metal, leather, and sewing templates and designs, and go to engraving designs. And then halfway through the panel here about, there is the engraved photo ornaments and cards. So right now I do have Christmas. Um, I've got the little Christmas tree next to it just to kind of help you guys find those things. So then you just go ahead and click on that and download it, and then you can go and we can upload it into Cricut Design Space. So you're in a new canvas, you hit upload, upload image, browse, and then you'll find the zip file that you open, and then you'll have, you'll find in the file all of these items. So right now we're just gonna go ahead and grab the engraving file. You'll notice these are all PNG files. That's because I draw them in Procreate. So they're all hand illustrated. And we're going to process this as a complex file. And you can see with the little background that it's all, it's um, the background's already been removed, so continue. And then save as a cut image. And then that is going to go ahead, throw it in our uploaded images. We click on it and insert image. And now we're just going to go ahead and size it down so it's a little more manageable. And there we go. Step two is to create a simple shape template. All I did was come up here to the shapes in the toolbar, add a square, and now I'm going to come up to the top, unlock my constraints, and I'm going to change the width to five inches and the height to seven. And this is going to represent our um, flashing. And the simple shape template actually helps you with both sizing and positioning later. Now what we're going to do is lock that baby up and duplicate it. Now this next shape we're going to turn it into 4.5, unlock it, and 6.5. And with both of those selected, so we come over in the Layers panel and Shift and select. And then we're going to come to Align Center. And with both of those still selected, we're going to do Slice. Let's remove those center shapes. And now we have a template that's going to show us exactly where to position our, our um, design. And it's going to help us figure out kind of what size. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to Draw right now. And on to step three. Now we're going to ready our engraving design. So that's step three. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and select it. And then up here in the margins, we're going to, or up in the, the toolbar, we're going to change this to 4.5. And we're going to change our height to 6.5. And that's going to be the size that we need to fit inside this. So let's lock her up. And you can see right there. So uh, what this is doing is it's giving us a quarter inch of a margin around so that when we tape our flashing to our mat, we have that kind of room to do so. But it also is kind of a, a way of kind of hedging our bets because sometimes even though we're going to try everything we can to be really precise with our positioning, the mat won't feed like entirely straight on. And so the design will be slightly crooked. And so if we have this margin around it, what we can do is we can just go ahead and and use our guillotine cutter and trim the edges and we'll still get a, a straight design. So it's kind of a way of just making things, you know, just in case. 
And then we're going to come up here next, and we've got it still selected. And under line type, we're going to go to engrave. And then we're going to select both of these. So both those like that. And come to align again in the top toolbar, center. And then we're going to attach them. Step four is to add the photo to our canvas. So to do that, we come to the upload again. And I already have mine uploaded, but the importing G um, JPEGs is just the same process as the PNG. Um, although you want to you want to choose complex, but then you don't want to remove any background. So you just keep it as it is, and then you want to save it as a print then cut. So I've got it here. I'm gonna insert it into my canvas. There it is. And I'm just gonna go ahead and size this down. And I want it to fit inside that little photo frame area. Now you can, if you want to just kind of tweak your photograph, you can go ahead and unlock the constraints. Um, you don't really want to do that much because it'll change, it kind of could distort the picture. And so you would rather crop um, if you wanted to get the certain size. But I kind of cheated there. So I'm going to lock that up because it looks good to me. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click off the visibility on the template. And we're moving on to step five. Step five is to add some personalization to your photo. Now this is a step you can skip, you don't need to do it, but I think it adds a lot to the final design. And so what I did, and we can do it all in design, right here in design space on our canvas. So I think that's kind of a cool thing. So what I did is I created two squares, one the size of my photo and then a smaller, and I did that same slice thing that we did before. And because the bottom square was white, I now have a white outline that fits right inside my picture. And I'm going to add a little bit of text. So I come to the text here on the sidebar and put in the Swifts. Now I'm using the birthday font because I know you guys are going to ask. And that's actually a systems font that I have, which means that it's one that I have downloaded onto my computer. So the spacing's a little odd, so we're going to come up to the text toolbar and ungroup the letters and then we can move them a little separately. So we can connect them. And whenever you guys are connecting letters, you want to make it really big so that you can see closely, like so. And then what else we can do is we can go ahead and unlock the constraints, changing the size. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead, if I'm satisfied, and I'm going to weld those down here. And I'm going to change the color up by the line type to white. And so it has a little bit of outline, you can see that. I'm going to move it on top here. And I'm not going to do the the right now, and I'm going to probably add the date as well. But I want you guys just to see this. And actually, let's go ahead and click on the photo and my outline. I'll come up to align, center again. Okay, that's a little bit better. I've got the Swifts where I want it, and I'll still, like I said, I'll do the the and the, the date yet, but I wanted to show you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and select all of those, and then come down and flatten my design. And now you can see how that looks like it's been, you know, run through a, a design software of some sort. So I think it looks really good. It's all part of the image now. Okay, so that's a quick little design space tutorial, and we're going to move on to step six. Okay, moving right along, we're at step six. And step six is to prepare everything on our canvas so that we can hit make it. So we have our um, design right now, and that's looking good. We're going to go up to the layers panel and click on the eye so that we can see what everything looks like. And I like it. If we needed to make any adjustments to the photo, we could have done that now. And then we want to make sure that our template says draw, our design is engrave, and our image is print and cut. And now we're going to kind of um, split our project into two different parts. Because if we try to send everything to make it right now, what would end up happening is that Cricut would only give us the material settings for a print and cut. And because we want to engrave on metal, we're going to want that metal setting. And so in order to kind of get around, like do a workaround, we're going to go ahead and click off that eye. Um, and this is actually a good, really a good place to save the project as well if you want to do that. So we're going to click that off again. And now we have our print and cut, and I'm going to duplicate it. 
so that I can make the best use of my printing sheet. So I've got all four of those and now we're gonna hit make it. Step seven is to print and cut the photos. So we're back on the map preview page here and we're gonna go ahead and hit continue because everything looks good. Cricut put that black box, the registration box around our image and that's gonna print there. And that's so that Cricut can go ahead and use that sensor mark um, to precisely align when it does the cut. I really love print and cut. I make a lot of stickers. Okay, so now we send a printer. And this is the Cricut print setup and it doesn't have all the options that I really like. So I'm gonna go ahead and toggle off the bleed and toggle on the system dialog. And I'm gonna hit print. And now it does tell us that it might appear behind our browser. So I'm gonna come up and minimize. And then it's gonna show up right here. Okay, so I'm, in, I'm using this Inkjet Final Glossy. And so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to hit rear tray because it's a little bit um, thicker, the regular paper. I really like that rear tray option. Do photo because it's glossy. And then um, between normal and best, normal works really, really well. So we're just gonna stick there. And then we're gonna hit print. Once you've printed your photos, we're gonna go ahead and align them in the corner like we saw on the map preview page. Um, and I'm gonna be as precise about that as I can. Like so. I like to use the light grip mats for any paper projects, for my stickers, or anything like that. Um, it's just a lot easier not to have to pull things off. Um, okay, so I'm gonna open this up. I'm gonna go ahead and load. And then over on the screen, I'm gonna go ahead and hit Browse All Materials. And up in the search bar, I'm gonna type in printable. And there at the bottom is printable vinyl. So we're gonna stick with that, put done. And it's gonna prompt us to go. Step eight is to engrave. So now that we've finished the print and cut, we can come back to our canvas and we're going to go and switch projects basically because we're going to click off on the image and then we're gonna come up and we're going to detach our two images here. I'm gonna check to make sure it says draw and engrave, which it does, and I'm gonna hit make it. Okay, before we go ahead and set up our, our mat, I just wanted to show you guys so before you actually go ahead and engrave, you're gonna to wanna to check your, your sheet. So like this one right here, it scrapes a little bit on the edge when I try to use my fingernail. Some of the paint kind of comes off. Now if I try this one, nothing comes off. And I think the difference is that I don't think I sprayed the edges here quite as well. So this sheet itself would be just fine if I wanted to engrave in the middle. So I'll use this for another project, probably the snow globes. So I'm gonna go ahead and I've got this and actually Magica Television. I've got this already taped down. And so what you're gonna do is we're gonna use painter's tape. I've already placed it on here at the two and the two. And remember that quarter inch that we gave ourselves? So at this point, we wanna make sure that we have it taped on the edges, but we don't wanna go over that quarter inch because what's gonna happen is it's gonna um, possibly, if it does shift while we engrave, it could um, possibly have to, you know, it would go through the paint, painter's tape. And although that, you know, does work out fine, it gives you a less of a sharp um, engraving. So we're gonna just go ahead and try to make it sure that we're here and here, everything's arranged precisely. And now we're gonna make our matte preview page over here match. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna put that at the two and the two. And I'm gonna pull this in here. And now whenever I'm doing engraving, I really make this bigger because even just a little bit of the shift really does matter. So I was going to, I've got it lined up so I can see that top line just a little bit. And 
I'm going to get it right between that two and the seven as closely as I can. And then this is where it's kind of great to have that opening that we placed because now what we can do is go ahead and just place our engraving design right in that opening and we know that it's perfectly centered. Okay, so that looks good to me. We're gonna go and click on the template, three dots in the corner and we're gonna put hide selected because we don't need that anymore. So it's down here, you can see it's hidden. This does say engrave and we're gonna hit continue. Okay, so over here now it's saying um, set the base material. So we wanna do stainless steel and it's going ahead and telling me to use my tool, which I do have my engraving tool in here. So the engraving tool, just really quickly, is the quick swap posing and the tip. So you actually want both of those. And then we're gonna insert this right here in that second carriage and click that in. And the star wheels are all the way to the right. I'm going to load the mat. Double checking that this is all down. And I'm going to hit go. Okay, it's all done. So I'm going to unload my mat. And then the last step here is to actually just peel off the tape. And then there's some debris from the paint or from the paint getting scraped off. So I'm gonna take my tape that I used and I'm just gonna pick it up like this. And that's just gonna clear that up for me. And it's kind of cool, it's almost like revealing because there's kind of some stuff on it, and then you start picking it off and you can see the, the lines really nicely. If you guys can see that. It got really crisp here. So I'm gonna remove this and then I will show show you guys what to do with it. Okay, step nine is to put it all together. So I'm gonna grab my sticker here. And we're gonna go ahead and line this right up. And there we go. Okay, so one or a couple last things that we're gonna do is I am gonna go ahead and trim the edges or corners here with the tin snips or the jeweler shears, I mean, just to kind of round those off a little bit. And then if we had, if it had been off. We could have used the guillotine cutter to go ahead and trim around here, but it looks really, really good. And now we can go ahead and we can mail it as is, or we could go ahead and put some little holes in the corners. Let's see. So this is a crocodile, and it has two punches. So there's the smaller one and this bigger one. Let's just go do the bigger one. just punches right through there. Actually, that bigger one's a little big. That's okay. okay. There we go. And you can actually measure with this too. I didn't do that, but you can. And then it's completely even. So we're gonna actually gonna either finish this with a piece of wire with some beads, or this is just a little bit of pipe cleaner. And I'm just gonna put that through there. it through here so it has a nice hanger on it wrap it around a few times and then trim it you guys can see what that looks like so this is it with the beads this is a little heavy duty wire and then I did one that's got the clear sticker paper, 
And so it actually, you can see a little bit of the engraving through the sticker paper, which is kind of cool. And then I just put a great big huge sticker on this. And then here it is done in gold. And I like that because the gold really kind of twinkles as well. And then this is what somebody would receive. So that's your photo card. And then they can go ahead and bend that up. And it can be a wall heating or it could be the card. So it's a keepsake that they're gonna actually keep from year to year. So what do you think, engraved Christmas cards this year? They're cute, they're fun, and super unusual. And now that you've seen how to do it, you know that they're easy too. And with the aluminum flashing, which is super inexpensive, I think you guys are gonna find this is a great Christmas beginner craft to start with. So whether you're Christmasing in July or right before Christmas, you guys can make it and enjoy it, and I'm super glad you're here. Now, if you would like to see more engraving tutorials on engraving with a Cricut Maker, or more print and cut tutorials, I do have a ton of them on my blog this is just completely my thing and I love it and I think I have at least four or five different ornament tutorials so you're definitely in the right spot if you want to try something new and so go ahead check my playlist and then like comment or subscribe for all the new <laughs> thanks for watching